Welcome to Bishop G Live, a program that teaches you how to walk in the supernatural in every area of your life. Invite your friends, invite your relatives, invite your co-workers to connect right now because it's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Well, today we're gonna continue with uh, purpose, right? So we talk about purpose. The last time we talked about the fact that you were created for um, to live in God's glory. Uh, now we're gonna look at another aspect of purpose in life. I don't wanna give it out to you. You will get a chance to hear it in the teaching. But before I go any further, let me introduce my beautiful panel here. And I'll start with Marilyn today. Marilyn, how are you today? Bishop, I'm doing amazingly well. Wow. I'm happy to be here. Um, I like your green shirt. You like the green? Is green your favorite color? No, actually, it's, actually it's, it's mine. Just, this was, this was ah. um, Romani inspired because it's her favorite color. And That's I love her, her favorite dearly. color. That's why I well, said today I'm going to do something for her. Well, green <laughs> happens to go well with you. <laughs> Thank you. And, well. and it brings hope, you know, in this uh, program. Romani, how yeah. are you today? Oh, uh, Bishop G, my God, this week has just been wow. an emo enormous blessing to be here and being to, uh, to minister to the people and pray with them and for them has just been just incredible. So thank Praise you again God. for having us. Awesome. Yeah. Well, it's always a pleasure to be with you guys. We're going to delve right into today's program with a time of worship. Let it rain. Let it happen now. Shower down, shower down, Jesus. Oh, say open the floodgates. We want to see you, Jesus. Oh, let it rain. You say open the floodgates.
open the floodgates of heaven, let it rain. And I'll tell you, when God rains, he rains revelations. One of the things that he rains is visions, dreams, revelations. Um, Ezekiel, in Ezekiel chapter 1, he said, the Lord opened up in the heavens and I saw visions of the Almighty. So sometimes when God reigns, it's not always financial blessings. Sometimes it's simply revelations. And guess what? One of the things that he can reveal to you is your purpose as he reigns. So last week, we learned about the fact that created us for his glory. Today, we're going to realize that he also saved us for its glory. Let's jump into the word. As we had said, God did not only create you for his glory, he also saved you for his glory. So if you are a believer, <laughs> you have another reason for which to glorify God. First of all, he created you for his glory. So as his creation, you need to glorify him. But as somebody who benefited of his salvation, you also need to glorify him. The purpose of creation is to glorify God and the purpose of salvation is to glorify God. And in the case, in the case of salvation, we see that our salvation was worked out in three stages and it involved all three people of the Trinity. All of them were involved in our salvation. First of all, the Bible says that the Father predestined us. We find the three stages of salvation in the book of Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 1. And in, in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 5, the Bible says the Father predestined us. So let's look at verse 5. It says, having predestined us to adoption, as sons by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will. Verse, and verse six says, to the praise of the glory of his grace. He predestined us to the praise of the glory of his grace. Now, predestination carries the idea of marking in advance. The Father marked us in advance. He is the architect of the whole plan of salvation. God marked us for salvation in advance. And why did he mark us for salvation? Why did he elect us for salvation? Why did he choose us for salvation? Verse six says, to the praise of the glory of his grace. So God predestined you the Bible says that God proved his love towards us in that when we were yet sinners, he died for us. God mocked you even when you were in the world and you didn't care about him. And you were, uh, uh, maybe some of you were denying him. Maybe some of you were, uh, uh, you know, bad mouthing the things of God and you had no care whatsoever, no thought whatsoever of God. He looked at you in your sin and loved you. He predestined you. He pre-marked you. The day that you came and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't the first that, that day that he started dealing with you. You came to him because he had his hand on you even when you didn't know him. And why did he do that? The Bible says in verse 6, to the praise of the glory of his grace. So why did, God, did the Father predestine you? For his glory. After the Father is predestined you, then the Son came and redeemed you. So look at verse 7 of the same chapter of Ephesians. It says, In Him we have redemption through His blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of His grace. And in verse 12, it says, That we, that we who first trusted in Christ should be to the praise of His glory. So look at that again, to the praise of his glory. Verse seven says, in him we have redemption. And then verse 12 says, to the praise of his glory. Redemption means deliverance from evil by the payment of a price. So the plan of salvation, the plan of salvation was expensive to carry out. 
The plan couldn't be paid with money. It couldn't be paid with gold. It couldn't be paid with silver. It had to be paid with the blood of Jesus Christ because somewhere I read, without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. So in order for God to forgive us, he had to do so with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Redemption was an expensive endeavor. It cost the father the blood of his own son. Jesus shed his blood, which means that he gave his life for your salvation. And why did the son redeem you from your sin? Break the chains of sin and death an evil spirit in your life, why did he give you redemption and set you free so you're no longer a slave? Just like the song, song says, I'm no longer a slave of fear. I am a child of God. Why did God set you free? Verse 12, to the praise of his glory. So the reason why God redeemed you, so the Father predestined you for his glory, and then the Son came and redeemed you for his glory. The father marked you in advance for his glory, and the son went on the cross, shed his blood, and died, and redeemed you, and set you free from the slavery of sin, death, and the powers of hell for his glory. After the son predestined you, and after the father predestined you, and the son redeemed you, and then came the Holy Spirit. So look at verse 13 in the same chapter. In verse 13, Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, it says, In him also you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom having believed you were, in whom having believed you were sealed by the Holy Spirit of promise. And verse 14 says, Who is the guarantee of, an, of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession to the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit sealed us. So the Father predestined us, the Son redeemed us, and the Holy Spirit came and sealed the project of salvation by his presence. So you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. And why were you sealed with the Holy Spirit? The Bible says to the praise of his glory. So the reason why the Holy Spirit, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit, is to the praise of the glory of God the Father. Sealed. You know what that means, sealed? It means you're guaranteed. When the king put his, see his seal on, on a document in the Old Testament, it means it was irreversible. If you read the book of Daniel, you will see that it was irreversible. So the Father, the Holy Spirit of God seals you. That's a way of saying that you pertain in eternally. You belong eternally to God the Father. So the Father predestined you. The Son redeemed you. The Holy Spirit sealed you. The Father marked you in advance for salvation. The, whole, the, the Son paid the price so salvation can become a reality. And the Holy Spirit seals the salvation so it can be secured eternally. And why did the Father mark you in advance for His glory? Why did the Son shed His blood on Calvary to, for His glory? And why did the Holy Spirit seal you for His glory? glory. So your life is about the glory of God. So not only you were created for God's glory, you were saved in three stages, predestination, redemption, and the sinning of the Holy Spirit. All of that was done for the glory of God. So what does that mean? It means that as a believer, if you are not living for the glory of God, you may be saved, but you will not live a fulfilled life you will not live a satisfied life. You will not live a joyful life. If you are a believer and the center of your life is not God and you're not wondering what can I do to glorify God every day, every minute, every second of my life, you will miss the purpose of your life as a believer. Then you can be a believer and still be in depression. You can be a believer and still be empty. You can be a believer and still it still looks like your life makes no sense whatsoever. If you miss the glory of God, you've missed everything. 
He's predestined you for his glory. He's redeemed you for his glory. And he sealed you for his glory. When you find the glory of God, you find joy. No matter what may be going, uh, what you may be going through in life. The apostle Paul was in jail when he wrote the epistle to the Ephesians. He was in jail. Yet, while he was in jail, he wrote to his brothers and said, Rejoice in the Lord. I said again, rejoice. How come, how can the apostle Paul, who is in jail, can be telling those who are outside to rejoice? Because in jail, he was fulfilled, he was satisfied, he was joyful. Why? Because he was living for the glory of God. When you are living for God's glory, you have a joy that no circumstance in life can ever take away from you. Why are you living today? What's the purpose of your life today? What gets you out of bed every morning? If it's not the glory of God, you've missed it. May the glory of God be the center of your life. When you, when you live for the glory of God, you glorify Him. And I'm going to explain to you what that means. God bless you. Praise God. Hallelujah. We learned today that God not only created us for his glory, but he also saved us for his glory. If you haven't had a chance to receive that salvation yet, if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you need to do so today. Receiving Jesus Christ is as easy as ABC. A, you have to admit that you are a sinner. The Bible says that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. B, you have to believe that Jesus died for you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever uh, believeth in him would not perish, but have everlasting life. And C, you have, you have to confess it with your mouth. The Bible says, If you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. So today, it's your opportunity to give Jesus Christ your life. And here's how you're going to do that. You see the number on the screen, take your phone and text the word SAVED on the number on the screen right now. Take your phone, go to WhatsApp and text the word SAVE on the number on the screen right now. And as you do that, you're going to enter in that glorious salvation. It's going to be a new life. It's a simple act but that's gonna change your life forever. So while you're doing that, let me just have a chance to just, uh, we know, c continue the text, but I wanna talk to, uh, you know, Romani a little bit. You know, in this segment, we talked about the fact that we were created, uh, not only we were created for God's glory, he saved us for his glory. And one of the things that I mentioned is that as a believer, you cannot experience your full joy you can be saved, but you don't experience fulfillment until you start walking in God's purpose for your life. Yeah. Is that something you can testify of? Oh, def definitely, wow. Bishop. I, I believe that sal uh, salvation brings that internal peace, hmm. you know, that, that just let you know that whatever happens, yeah. that you are secure. You, you are, are secure. secure in the Lord. So, you know, just, you know, salvation opens the, the door to everything else. Yes. And once salvation comes in, you, you, you experience that the joy of salvation. The joy of salvation. You know, so, so I, I, I would just talk to somebody right now and say, you, if you have not accepted Christ, open that door. Yes. You know, open that door and just let him come in and just rain let on him your rain life. Let, let him, him rain. just yeah. flood your life has has you know walking in God's purpose for your life has it made a difference for you as a believer i mean i mean glorifying god making god the center of your life how has that impacted your life well bishop and by the way why oh. she's talking continue to text to accept christ guys <laughs> um well bishop i feel like one of the greatest things i can say as a young person, you know, in my ages where I'm supposed to be 
experimenting, trying new things. There's no greater joy I find than serving God. Wow. Um, I know people in my life, people who I used to be friends with, people who I went to high school with, um, they haven't found God yet. They haven't found their purpose in God yet. So they are looking for joy in other things, you know, mm. the typical stuff, the clubbing, the partying, the relationships that mean nothing, et cetera. And they're always saying, you know, I'm sad, I'm depressed. And like, there's this era in this generation of, of a certain sadness that's wow. walking with this generation. And I can say that genuinely that the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. <laughs> the joy Literally. of the Lord is my strength. What a great sentence to uh, take a pause with, and we're gonna come back for a moment of prayer today. Well, as you know by now, my friend, every in every program, we want to take some time to pray for a pressing need in your life. And in this program, we want to pray for your spiritual growth, for your life of intimacy, your for you to grow in your relationship with God. Why do we not want to pray for your spiritual growth? Because the Bible says that as we behold him, we are being transformed from glory to glory. We should never be satisfied with one level of glory. Uh, whatever level of glory we have experienced in God, we should always be trusting the Lord to take it to another level, another level of glory. So before I pray for your spiritual growth, for you to go into another level of glory, we want to encourage you with a testimony. Oh, so Romani, God. tell me, what do you got for us well, today? Well, we have another uh, just a powerful testimony of wow. how when we take God seriously in our lives through prayer and fasting and wow. what God can do. This is uh, Helen, Helen from Boston. Helen from Boston. Yeah, she said, my best regards to Daddy G and Mommy Pat mm -hmm. and the Shekinah family. For the past few months, I have been in a state of tremendous spiritual dryness. Wow. But my soul was yearning for God. My soul wow. was yearning for God. The weight of my problems and worries were unbearable. Wow. So you can just imagine what yeah. state she was in. It made me depressed. The announcement of the annual 40 days fast at Tabernacle of Glory was like a breath of fresh air. Like a breath of fresh air. <laughs> I decided to participate and I wanted God to restore me. And that's what he did. Wow. He restored my prayer life. He restored my prayer life. My intimacy with him. I got my spiritual language. Mm, I got my spiritual language. She got her spiritual language during the 40 days of fasting. I have an unquenchable thirst for God. Mm. The closer I get to him, the more of him I Ooh. want. <laughs> Isn't that yeah, amazing? Yeah, 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 yeah. She said, in him I have found peace, serenity, and joy wow. that money and no connection can bring. My goodness. I can't explain what I feel, but it's wonderful, incredible. I can smell the roses again. Oh, Lord. I see my future through his eyes. Wow. And I know that my season of testimony has just begun. May God peace and grace be with you. I just love this testimony. Isn't and I good? and I encourage uh, the ah. people that are listening to us right right now just being in this present. We want to hear your testimony. So the the you can use the number that you see on the screen right now a uh, 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 type testimony, a uh, text testimony on that number and it will be our pleasure to share what the what the Lord is doing wow. in your life. Amazing. Yeah. Amazing. Wow, let's just go in prayer yes. as 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 you know, as some people are test are, are texting their testimonies. Uh we want to go in prayer mm. and just pray for us to take another level in, in God from glory to mm. glory. Hallelujah. Lord. From glory. Father, right oh, now Lord, in the name of Father Jesus God. Christ, Lord. Thank we pray for every 
single person are listening to us right now or watching us. Your word says that you move us from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory, from glory to glory. So I pray right now in the name of Jesus Christ that you help us to move from glory. So I pray wherever they are right now, I pray that you give them a greater thirst for your presence, a greater thirst for your word, a greater thirst for prayer, a greater thirst for fasting, a greater thirst to spend time in your presence, a greater thirst for obedience, a greater thirst, Father God, to be in your presence for ministry. Everything, Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, do it, Lord Jesus Christ. We honor you, we glorify you, and we love you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord. We have a prayer request. Yes, we do. Um, we actually have a prayer request from Texas. Um, this is um, a man named Barry. He's saying that he wants um, his spiritual person to be stronger. Uh, he wants to become a better son of God, a better husband. Oh, wow. So he wants his spiritual growth to impact his family, not mm -hmm. only his relationship with God, but his relationship with his family as well. So we're going to pray for Barry to grow spiritually. Mm -hmm. Barry wants to grow spiritually. Hallelujah. Well, we're going to pray for Barry, and then we're going to pray for every person who is in Barry's situation. We want to grow spiritually. Oh, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, you say, Father God, ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. Ask and you shall receive. And of course, Father God, if we ask you for spiritual things, Lord Jesus Christ, you will not, uh, you will not, Lord Jesus Christ, uh, 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 deny us of that. So I pray in the name of Jesus Christ that you give Barry your presence, that you help Barry that work. His spiritual life can be strengthened. Your presence, oh God, can be strengthened in his life. Thank you, and we glorify and honor you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And somebody said, Thank you, Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Well, it's a pleasure for us. Again, it was a pleasure um, to just come into your home um, um, today. Uh, and uh, we want to remind you that one of the things that help us to grow is as we give in the presence of God. As we give to the Lord, we grow. So we encourage you, um, if you have not uh, given, um, that right now you go at the bottom of the screen, you're going to see a phone number, text the word give to the number that you have on the screen, and then we're going to take it from there. Father, right now in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for my brother, I pray for my sister, I pray for everyone who is giving right now, Father God. Let their giving glorify your name. Let their giving exalt you. Let their giving lift you up. We thank you. We honor you for it. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Tomorrow we'll see you for another program, another time in the presence of God. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye.